The Flat Earth community is all in a tizzy about the images of some oil rigs, and I have to say, well done, the Earth is not a sphere. The Flat Earth community is all in a tizzy about the images of some oil rigs, and I have to say, well done. Well done for fucking things up so spectacularly, but mostly well done for the marketing. Calling this image the Black Swan really is a good move, and it shows that some Flat Earthers may have actually read something. So, AB Science is the latest to walk into a string of flamethrowers with regards to the Black Swan. He makes an attempt to debunk this and will go through some of his remarks in regards to the imagery and its justifications therein. Let's first address the modus tollens thing. Modus tollens states, if P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If P, we live on a globe of radius 3959 miles, then Q, every horizon distance measurement cannot be more than 1.23 miles times the square root of the observer height in feet. Not Q. The geometric horizon is far greater than 2.73 miles for 5 foot. Therefore, not P. The Earth is not a globe. If we take the following statement that if the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 6,371 kilometers, then at an observer height of 1 foot or 30.48 centimeters for those who are sensible, the horizon should be 1.9 kilometers away. Now, this is a simple statement. If P, then Q, or formally written as this. And we then observe that the horizon is clearly farther than 1.9 kilometers away, and we can then conclude that the initial statement is incorrect. This stage we have AB Science describing a horizon singular, the horizon. That the horizon is clearly farther than 1.9 kilometers away. Later in the presentation, AB Science will have us using two horizons a geometric and an apparent redundant term horizon, which he'll substitute in with actual geometry and donkey dick geometry. But we cannot know what about it is incorrect. You see, the statement P is, if the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 6,371 kilometers, and our results could mean one of several things. The first is that the Earth is not a sphere. The second is that the Earth is a sphere, but the radius is not 6,371 kilometers. And the third is the statement is incomplete. So the first statement, the Earth is not a sphere, would be correct based on the geometry and physicality claimed at the given radius. The second statement is that the Earth is not a sphere, but with a radius that's apparently fixed in stone? and has geometric physical proof to back it? That would be the same as number one, the Earth is not a sphere. And the third statement would be that it is incomplete to state that the Earth is a sphere with a given radius value. We would also agree, the Earth is not a sphere. All the modus tollens thing shows is that there is something wrong with the premise, but not what is wrong with the premise. The premise being incorrect is very straightforward. It is asserted that the Earth is a sphere with a given radius, and that has fixed geometry. Metaphorically, and reified by fundy idiots, this would be set in stone, if indeed we did stand upon a sphere. Debunking the assertion of the modus tollens argument leaves you with only one conclusion. The Earth is not a sphere, with a radius which should be set in stone. We then have to take more information to figure out what the hell is going on, so we can take this image. And we conclude that, yes, the Earth is definitely a sphere. And ah, the old presenter white swan and declare that the physical geometric horizon is once again physical, geometric and obscuring things in the distance based on Earth geometry. Now, obviously, that would require 
the horizon to be physical, geometric, actual, and capable of blocking something in the distance, as your physical geometric maths asserts. But later we'll find that he has a bit of an issue with asserting that we have a physical geometric horizon. Maybe the Earth's radius is not what we thought it is. But then we pick more images, and then it looks like if we take option two to be correct, then the Earth's radius appears to change. And this depends on the weather conditions. AB Science now hand waves the idea that we should have a physical geometric horizon. That would be absurd. The physicality asserted by the geometric calculations would vary based on the weather. How dare we assert that you have a physical geometric horizon. Anyway, let's have a look at the images and consider what is going on. Now, I will preface this with saying that a picture is not worth a thousand words when it comes to science. Without controls, calibration and exact information about the environment, they tend to be worth fuck all. Following on from his summary at the beginning of his video, a straw man must be burned. Nobody at any point of this logical consistency argument has asserted that we have science. However, it seems that that straw man that is often asserted by fundamentalist religious zealots on the globe side of this argument needs debunking out of habit. We haven't asserted science. It is not us that claim natural phenomena when none exists. But you feel free to burn this straw man. But here we definitely see that the horizon appears to be quite a bit farther than 1.9 kilometers. So what could be going on here? Well, we could be talking about density gradients and temperature gradients and yada, 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 refraction. Now, what kind of refraction? Actually, I don't give a shit. Well, you should really care, as the refraction used in your geometric mathematics is based on geometry. Terrestrial refraction, if you're talking about the sphericity of an Earth that's sphere-shaped, would be a reification of an R value into a refraction value mathematically based only on the radius value, giving you a physical geometric horizon to bend the light at the rate of 7 over 6R in the case of standard terrestrial refraction's actual effects, which don't exist beyond the mathematics of the geometry. I'm a physicist and I couldn't give a damn about how you want to label how refraction can manifest in different ways. I so get this, he's a scientist who doesn't care about how things manifest. What, natural phenomena? and the cause thereof, yeah, why would you be interested in that? What with science being the establishment and elucidation of the cause of an effect? But yeah, why would you concern yourself with such things? You're a scientist. You've got stories to make up and horizons to create out of redundant terms like apparent. That's science, right? No, you fool. Science would be the elucidation of cause when studying effects about the fact that there is a wave of some sort and the direction of this wave changes when it hits a different medium and this is what we will be talking about we start now we will be working in 2d so its components are given by two pi where there is a beam of light hitting an idiom one which is given by this express to be a continuous function what this means is that at the lambda two so the wavelength clearly lambda north cancels out so we are of lighting it in and we get because this means that we could possibly make a material where we can slow light down. Now, a number of research groups are heavily involved. One, if you want to encrypt and that this doesn't prove anything, I give you this video. The refractive index of these parameters change over the path of the beam. And this is the reason why I said earlier that in science, a picture is definitely not worth a thousand words. So after a very long and boring presentation about light and what it does, we come to his actual conclusion, which is to say, the horizon is refracted. So I may as well just demolish his point immediately, which is to say that we only have one horizon. The horizon in his geometric model is of course geometric. The refraction in his geometric model is based on R, giving him a physical geometric horizon. So his bullshit swindle now begins and he inserts his second horizon, utilizing the term apparent. Not realising, like many of the idiots who have discussed this black swan argument, that the term apparent is already included in the definition of a horizon. That would be the apparent position, where the sky meets the ground, or the position where the sky appears to meet the ground. Apparent being entirely redundant. But you can make some pretty easy approximation. 
I will draw a hand wavy diagram of how the curved path affects what we can see. So here we have a person standing on a sphere and there is a green line tangent to the sphere which also intersects the stick figure's eyes. And so here we go with our two horizons. We're going to be performing actual geometric calculations based on the green line that we cannot see, giving us a geometric horizon that doesn't exist, and another redundant term usage of the word apparent, Apparent horizon! Hooray for the usual bullshit from globeheads who don't understand the argument and appreciate they require a geometric horizon. And this indicates the location of the geometric horizon. We then have some oil rigs which are just beyond the geometric horizon. The oil rigs are just beyond a geometric horizon that we don't experience, cannot see, and yet he's drawing a line to it to perform the geometry required to employ terrestrial refraction at 7 over 6R and give him a second refracted horizon that's apparent in the distance? Well, we'd need that first geometric horizon. Where the hell is that if we can't see it? How are we going to draw a straight line to it, AB science? You'd require a geometric horizon for this explanation, now wouldn't you? It is with the apparent horizon to be behind the oil rigs. In contrast to other videos, I didn't actually perform the calculations for this bit and it's actually just a picture I drew. I like to be transparent and show every step of the way and that is just not feasible for these kind of calculations. At least at some scale, AB Science understands that he does require a geometric horizon to draw a straight line to, even though he's got an explanation of precisely how not straight and bent those lines actually are. So, we only have one horizon? The horizon in your geometric model is physical and geometric. The apparent horizon, as you're describing it with this redundant term for the apparent position where the sky meets the ground, is not a physical horizon as demonstrated in your geometric model. You absolutely require a physical geometric earth curve to be in visible actualization and block things in the distance as demonstrated by your example of a white swan. Unfortunately, it's not your choice whether the horizon is physical on one day and not actual refracted, apparent, on another. You have failed to debunk the black swan. You require a geometric horizon. The horizon we experience absolutely is not geometric. But with that, thank you all for watching and I want to say thank you to my patrons. You'll see me soon.